Derek, as, as Gabe is reporting and experiencing himself, um, it might be spring, but it is cold out there. And 48 mm. degree water uh, is much colder uh, when you are in it than 48 degree air. What are these people dealing with? Yeah, in fact, cold water drains body heat about four times faster than cold air physically does. So uh, that's really saying something about the survivability times of the potential of people in the water. We don't know how many people, uh, but assuming what we've seen on video and the reports we're getting from authorities on the ground, that it is likely that people here are in the water. So what are they dealing with? What are they contending with? Well, uh, you know, a 50 degree water temperature might not seem like that cold, but it can be very deadly. And that is because of the risk of hypothermia, because of the risk of cold shock. Uh, your heart rate increases, your breathing increases, your blood pressure even changes. And uh, we, we've got this graph to just give examples of how long, this is plus or minus an hour or two on either side of this, but water temperatures within 40 to 50 degrees, uh, a human survivability on average is between one to three hours. And we're approaching the five hour mark since this event occurred roughly 1.30 in the morning. So uh, there's a lot to be said and a lot to unpack with uh, what conditions are like in the water, but also above the water as well. Think about the search and rescue operators uh, that are on the scene as we speak. You heard Gabe talk about how frigid it feels like outside. Well, that is because of the wind chill. Right now, the air temperature is roughly 37 degrees near Baltimore, uh, but the winds are enough of a factor. I know it looks light here, but that's enough of a factor to bring down those wind chill temperatures. That is your apparent temperature on your exposed skin as you step outside uh, to roughly 36 degrees. So as we look as uh, temperatures through the course of the day today, we'll bottom out about 34 and reach a high of 51 today. So water temperatures, absolutely frigid and could be deadly, Casey. Yeah, no, Derek Van Dam. Derek, thank you uh, very much uh, for that. Uh, again, uh, for those of you who are just joining us, it is 6.18 a.m. here on the East Coast. We are waking up uh, to this just horrific breaking news. The Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, collapsing into the Patapsco River after it was hit by a container ship. You saw it there hit uh, the support uh, pylon uh, on the left side of your screen and collapse down uh, into the river. The uh, reports coming over uh, the, uh, the, the trans as emergency uh, response officials uh, were grappling with this, say the, the bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge is in the harbor. This is a major a commuter route uh, in the Baltimore, Washington uh, region. It is known as the Baltimore Beltway. It is 695 uh, is the name uh, of the highway. It circles at the city of Baltimore. It is the main uh, transit route uh, for many, especially trucks uh, carrying hazardous materials. Uh, we have heard uh, early uh, our early reports uh, from Baltimore City fire officials were that 20 people uh, were in the water, as well as a number of vehicles, including one vehicle that was the size of a tractor trailer. Unclear if that's actually what it was, but it was described as being the size uh, of a tractor trailer. The ship in question called the Dali. Uh, it was outbound uh, from uh, Baltimore Harbor heading for uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, and as we said, it hit that pylon, uh, according to the Coast Guard, at 1.27 a.m. ET this morning. So we are now waiting uh, for officials uh, to brief the media with what uh, they know or don't know uh, about how this happened and the current search and rescue efforts that are underway. We know that there are divers in the water uh, trying to rescue uh, people that may have come off that bridge. Uh, one um, county uh, executive, the Anne Arundel uh, County executive, uh, noting that he was praying for construction workers who may have been on that bridge uh, at the time of this collapse as well. So you've got cars that were driving across it, potentially construction crews uh, that were working on it. Uh, of course, there's the crew of the ship uh, itself uh, that uh, is also uh, feeling the ramifications potentially uh, in danger. And now, of course, you have first responders in the water uh, trying uh, to do the best they can uh, to pull people out. We've also heard uh, from the Coast Guard at this hour. They say uh, that they have sent uh, boats uh, as well as helicopters uh, from their station in Annapolis, their station in Curtis Bay, the helicopter coming down uh, from Atlantic City uh, Air Station. Uh, so this really a response uh, at all levels of government. Now, Juliet Kayem, um, I know this is actually uh, exactly your area of expertise, government response, uh, risk uh, management, crisis 
management. Can you help us understand uh, how these agencies are working together um, at this hour uh, and what happens next? Right. So we're, the focus is on response. It's going to be led by the Coast Guard uh, and then local and state officials. So I, I want to... Oh, and Juliet, excuse me. I, let me uh, just yep. interrupt you briefly. Um, I, I have not yet mentioned that we also heard from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, from the FBI, that Good. FBL Baltimore personnel uh, are on scene. So if you could help us understand Good. their role here, too. Yeah. Okay, so there's different pieces. So let's start with the response. The response is we're hoping that people are still alive, I have to admit, because I can, you know, I only want, you know, it's a low probability event that people would have survived for this long. We just know that. And so relatively quickly, uh, that response apparatus, especially with daylight, will then begin to uh, to shift to the, the pieces that we're discussing. The first is the investigation. Um, look, there we have to find out whether there's something called a harbor pilot on this ship. Harbor pilots are brought in by the jurisdiction and help a ship get out of a high risk area as we're seeing. This, um, okay, so this looks to me, and I've, I've, I've talked to people in the Coast Guard this morning, uh, that this um, was such a direct hit uh, that we have to assume either mechanical error, in other words, they could not control the ship, and there might be radio uh, uh, discussions to that extent, or uh, no one was in charge. In other words, so the, someone just left the steering. So you're going to look to how how could this happen? Uh, the third is is the the bridge itself. This is a span bridge. It means, as anyone who's ever been over one, that um, it's connected like a domino. Uh, and so a single hit in an area is going to bring the whole bridge down. It is not survivable. This is not a patch fix. We're seeing what is going to uh, happen. So then the fourth piece, as we're discussing with all these federal agencies, is now the alternative. The city has to move. Uh, the nation has to move. Uh, and what alternatives are available first for hazardous materials? This, to me, is the biggest focus. This bridge um, it was the alternative to putting hazardous materials in the tunnels that are around Baltimore. That was a post 9-11 shift when cities got a little bit um, uh, more serious about what was coming into their jurisdictions. Uh, so you're going to have a hazardous material problem of things getting out of, uh, of, of these waterways. So what alternatives are available? Uh, and then you have the citizens of not just Baltimore, uh, but of course, Maryland and DC, uh, and, we're gonna, and, and the Secretary of Transportation working with uh, state transportation officials and local transportation officials are going to have to find um, alternatives and also work with the private sector to relieve uh, the traffic and transportation demands that normally exist um, on, a, on, a, on a regular day. These alternatives are often worked through, but normally for short-term weather events, right? You have to, let's say you have to close a bridge, you know, a couple hours. Uh, this is going to be months and it's going to have uh, a national impact, our waterways, our supply chain systems, our navigation systems, the maritime system um, are all connected. And uh, something like this happens, um, however rare it becomes, its ripple effects will impact commerce and other, uh, other um, uh, transportation demands that this nation has. So I'm not surprised that uh, the Secretary of Transportation is on this. Their job is to start to help the city and state uh, get alternatives uh, because um, that's what we need now as well as we as we look at this horrible incident and and try to hope that people are still alive. So response, investigation, and and then uh, the the alternatives are the three different areas that we're looking at now in any in any crisis. And then the federal pieces are going to fit into all of those um, at this stage.